I'm very pleased to be able to follow the session uh, right before lunch with Tony Falzone and Corinne McSherry um, talking about fair use, which is really the perfect lead into this project um, called Critical Commons. Um, partly because one of the things that they staged was this kind of good cop, bad cop debate that uh, exemplifies some of the contradictions that are built into fair use. Um, and in fact, the origin of this project grows out of that. Um, we had a series of um, speakers that we brought down uh, in anticipation of the project, um, among them Larry Lessig, who um, gave his usual fair use sucks riff, we should really go in the direction of, of tiered licensing through Creative Commons. Um, but a few months after Lessig came down, we had uh, Peter Yazzie from uh, American University come down, um, and he gave very much the opposite position, saying that uh, very much as, as Tony did, um, claiming that fair use was actually kind of in a golden age and getting better and stronger, uh, and it gets better and stronger through use. Um, so we really sh weren't sure what to do about this. Um, on the one hand, you can't have EFF on your speed dial at, at every moment, every time you're making a fair use decision. Um, but at the same time, it feels very much like we're excluded from that discourse because we're not specialists. I'm not a, a DRM hacker. I'm not an actually trained legal professional. Um, so what really is the place for people like us, educators, makers, librarians, students, fan vitters, et cetera? Um, so I think it is really important to, uh, to include those voices in the conversation and not have this be um, kind of subject to this really polarized discourse that makes everything uh, very black and white, sort of either you're pirates or supporting terrorism, um, you know, or you're criminals. Um, so really the, the space that we were trying to carve out was um, trying to go against this sense of the uh, continual immobilization of the maker and the educator um, and to try to say, okay, what, what would that middle ground look like? And it looks like Creative Commons. I think it looks like um, Organization for Transformative Works, the fan vitting organization. Um, and we, they talked a lot also in the previous session about the Center for Social Media and the Best Practices Guides. Um, so this was kind of the models that we were trying to work from. Um, and it's not for nothing that educators are particularly cowardly um, when it comes to fair use because they really don't get administrative support. There's very little institutional incentive for supporting fair use. Um, and so what's the response? I think that we really, uh, in developing this project, wanted to say it's, we can't turn to the experts, we can't turn to the lawyers, we can't turn to our administrations, we really can only turn to each other um, in a kind of horizontal networked uh, mode. So Critical Commons was the um, project that grew out of that. Um, we got some support from the MacArthur Foundation from the Digital Media and Learning uh, Initiative in 2008. Um, and we modeled our, uh, our work very much on a kind of mashup of these uh, altars at which we worship, like the CSM, the Internet Archive. Um, and some of the open courseware initiatives um, or the open educational resources um, which are very interesting in, in theory, but in practice are missing all the things that make media education interesting. Um, they scrub out all the copyrighted material, and so that's something that we saw as a really um, significant deficiency of open courseware, and we wanted to do something to remedy that. Um, and just one other touch point, uh, the In Media Res project on Media Commons, which is about um, adding critical commentaries to media that exists online. Um, the thing that they don't do, though, is host it. So they rely on the stability of sites like YouTube to continue hosting materials, which is very often, as we learned in the previous session, um, just disappears. So you have commentaries that are pointing to things that no longer exist online. Um, so critical commons, we said, first of all, the important thing is that we need to host it. Uh, even though that's the thing that you're not supposed to do if it's all copyrighted material and you're trying to make a fair use claim, it's much more risky to be hosting it yourself. Um, but that was absolutely necessary. We also wanted to be able to upload and download full resolution projection theatrical quality video in addition to online viewable kind of um, flash quality video. Um, we also wanted to be able to allow educators to embed the media that they're working with within critical context. So um, something that looks like a lecture or a curricular context um, so each individual piece of media in the system has its own commentary or multiple commentaries, and those can be either text or voiceover, um, but then they can also be embedded in a kind of playlist structure as well. Um, and then, you know, kind of like wanting to inspire people to, at best, com compose their own best practices guides um, so that we have a resource that points to things like the Center for Social Media Guides. Um, and tries to encourage people to do that for themselves. Um, and then lastly, it's a kind of a showcase for multimedia scholarship, sort of work that can only exist if it's using media in this kind of fair use context. Um, and then the last thing I'll say um, is that our developers uh, are up, indeed upstairs, if they're not here in the room, uh, with us Engage Media. Um, this, the whole project was developed in a, in a platform called Plumi. Um, so that's our CMS. It's built on top of Plone. Engage Media delivered us for our uh, public launch at MacArthur in April on time and under budget. And I don't know when, when I've seen a, a software development project that you can say that of, but these guys um, did an amazing job, so I just want to um, 
say a big, big up to them. Uh, so that's it. Uh, the last thing I'll just say is um, the thing about this, you know, it's true, fair use isn't free. And for us, the cost of um, hosting this stuff and actually putting it out in these kind of what would otherwise seem very, uh, you know, illicit or questionable um, peer networks is the commentaries and actually be, having the work of transformation be the embedding of this and the recontextualization of the media that you're working with. So thank you very much.